going live. I think we are live. Yes. Hi, everyone. This is Ogs with the Galaxis team. I have Andras Kristoff, our founder and CEO here today. And we're really looking forward to hearing more about the Girls, Robots, Dragons collection with uh, legendary artist duo Boro Sixi. And we also have uh, quite a few AMA questions in that. So, Andras, whenever you're ready, please take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, let's let's get the confirmation that we are online and we are actually audible. I don't want to make the same mistake that I did uh, a couple of months ago when I was enthusiastically speaking for five minutes uh, muted. I think we are good. So, all right. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction and hi everybody. Uh, long time no see. It's been a while. Uh, uh let's see uh we wanted to talk about a couple of things i'm going to answer some generic ema questions as well but uh i want to talk first and foremost about the about the girls robots uh, dragons collection or grd for short i think this is pretty much the most visually stunning and uh, the most exciting uh, one of the most exciting collections uh, that we that we ever did so let us let me let me switch over to the uh, to to the website and if you don't mind i'm going to just go full screen so we can actually see it better uh like this uh so uh this is this is Girls Robots Dragons, which was created by two amazing uh, artists who has been shaping our uh, our dreams uh, for the for the last couple of uh, decades uh, they have been around since the 1990s and been working on everything from uh, from hearthstone to wizards of the coast to to world of warcraft to all different kinds of eras of sci-fi and fantasy and now they created this collection which uh, has three distinct features one is that it has stunning and amazing art i'm not kidding i i think the details and uh, and uh, and the art putting into the uh, put into these uh, the images are simply amazing but this collection will also have two very two two other very distinct uh, properties one is a set of utility traits where the the owners of the cards can claim physical redeemables like actual art uh, drawn or painted by the authors or 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 meetings with them and other benefits and we are going to talk about that in in the next stream what i want to focus on uh, focus on today is the gamification aspect there is a couple of very interesting ways that this art and these nfts can be and will be gamified so let me go there on the on the site and let's start with this the main thing is that no games uh, at least not in the blockchain space uh, could could go without prices the prices are going to be generated as uh, as the sale go on 20% of the total sale and 25% of the royalties on the secondary market will go to the price pool. These numbers are not final, like nothing is final until, until the sale starts, but these are not going to go down. If they're going to change, they are going to go up, definitely not going to go down. So at the very least, we've got 20% of the total sale and 25% of the royalties that is going to go into the price pool. The interesting part about that is that because of this second part, because of the of the royalties, it's going to be constant, as long as these cards are traded, it's going to be constantly refilling, replenishing. So it's not going to be that we've got a price pool and then uh, it will be claimed. As long as there is interest, as long as there is a secondary market for these, uh, for these NFTs, these, the price pool will be cap will keep refilling, which is uh, which is I think uh, is an interesting feature, and uh, and uh, it's going to be quite interesting. 
So what is this game about? The game is extremely simple. It's basically is about collecting the 15 different main characters of this series. The series is called GRD, uh, Girls, Robots, Dragons, and we've got five stunning dragons, uh, five robots, and five beautiful girls to, to collect. If you collect all the 15 main characters, you will end up with a, a collection like this. Now, each card has four possible different states that will create four possible different rarity of, collect, uh, of collections. Let's see the four different possible rarities. We've got a common, which is basically one of the main characters supported by two supporting layers. As you can see, the, we've got uh, this dragon, and behind that, there are two randomly selected layers. One is a, a visual effect, which, which case this, uh, uh, these circles, and behind that is a background, which is, which is in this case, uh, 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 some, uh, some rocks. So, the, the dragon and the two supporting characters consist the image. When it's uh, in a normal state, this we call um, a, a common version. Each of the 15 characters has a, a special uh, iteration, like in either, either by color or by some added details, which makes them rare. Uh, I don't remember the exact uh, uh, ratio between, uh, between rare and common. I believe it's 1 to 10, but I will confirm that uh, in a later date. So the rare uh, version of the dragon, as you can see, the, uh, the, the colors are different. And from this point of view, the background layers are irrelevant. So the rarity only depends on the, on the main character. But in order to make it easy to distinguish between rare and, and common, the rare characters will have a silver border around them. So you can immediately see whether, whether you are looking at the rare or the common version of a specific character. So that basically uh, makes the first two state of every possible card. It can be common or it can be rare. There are two more, uh, the two more versions that makes it even significantly more difficult to, to collect or create, as we will see a little bit later. The epic version comes with a specific layer set. For all the 15 characters, the authors, the artists, have created two specific layers, a supporting layer and the background layers that they thought that they match the character the best. If you end up with a card with that specific uh, uh, two layers, then it's going to be an epic version, and uh, it's going to get uh, this uh, uh, this decal here on the on the card. The P go, uh, goes for perfect, because the authors thought, the artists thought that this is the perfect set of layers for this specific character. We've got hundreds of different uh, uh, layers. So there are thousands, many thousands of different uh, random combination of, uh, of supporting layer and background. So getting a natural perfect, which makes the card epic, is going to be very difficult. I would say probably it, there is a chance that there will be no naturals uh, this time, but we will confirm that uh, before the drop uh, as well. And now we, 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 we come to the, the, the last possible, the rarest combination, the legendary, when we combine the perfect layer set with the, with the rare version of the character. 
So that basically gives us four different uh, uh, combinations for, for each character. We've got the common, we've got the rare, we've got the epic, which, uh, which, uh, which is made epic by the, by the perfect layer set. And we've got the legendary, which combines the rare and the epic. If you collect all 15 characters in, uh, in, the, in the common form, so basically you end up with 15 commons, <clears throat> one of each characters, you made the, uh, the, a complete set. And uh, by simply collecting this, you can submit that and withdraw the price for the common collection. It will be because because the main sale is going to be in it. Uh, it will be in in it. We will uh, announce the uh, the actual prices. I think is going to be one week from Monday. So in about uh, nine days, this table will be filled in with the actual prices. If you collect the rare version of every uh, every character and you submit a rare complete collection then you will get a, a significantly better price uh, uh, better better price for your collection if you happen to collect the epic collection which is basically the perfect layer set for each 15 characters then you will get uh, you will get uh, an even higher uh, price and if you be one of those very few legendary people who will be able to get the the legendary collection legendary version of each 15 characters then uh, you will get uh, uh, the latest price the, the the highest price very important when you submit these you are not going to lose your nfts you're going to keep your nfts but uh, there will be one utility trait on them, uh, a badge that will enable you to use these characters into, into and submit them as a collection. Once a collection is submitted, those badges will, will disappear uh, from each of the 15 characters. It means you can only submit an NFT once in a pool. So as the game goes on, there will be less and less eligible NFTs to, to submit, to collect and to submit into, into pools. Again, this might change, so don't take it as a gospel, but the, the, the current uh, uh, version is that there will be only 3,000 NFTs sold in the in the main sale so there will not be many characters with this specific uh, uh, badge so it will be important to 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 get this uh, at least at least from the main sale so basically you can collect a complete collection of all the 15 characters and based on the uh, the addition of the cards whether it's common rare epic or legendary you can put together a complete collection and, 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 and claim the appropriate price for, the, for that particular collection. That's about it. We don't want to make it very complicated. You collect, you claim. And uh, this concludes uh, the, um, the, 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 the explanation of, the, of this very simple, but hopefully rather engaging um, um, little collecting game. And I will make at least two more streams about this collection. One is going to be about the art. But for that, I will, uh, I will invite the, the artists as well, so we can actually talk with them and talk about their art, why, uh, why they, they created these, and in general, what kind of art they've created uh, over the years. And then we will have yet another stream where I will 
go through the different benefits, the utility traits that will come with this collection, the, the different physical redeemables, the different the autographs, the, the, the signatures, and the online meetings with the, uh, uh, with the artists. But even until then, go ahead and, uh, and locate the demo card on the grd.fan site and, and click around and see what it is going to be. I think in many ways, this is going to be an absolutely stunning and a, and a rather limited collection. Okay, that's basically concludes uh, what uh, I wanted to talk about the, the gamification. <clears throat> and as I promised, and it's been a while, I will, uh, I will uh, do my best to answer uh, some, some questions. Very important, I, as always, I will do my best to answer questions and to, and to share my, my personal opinion on things, but do not take these answers as decisions or, or, or final decisions or, or words carved in stone. This is a very dynamic market and uh, things change and uh, things change often we go towards the goal to make this collection useful and worthwhile on the long term. So we will do whatever, we, uh, whatever it takes to make that happen. So again, uh, I am very happy to answer questions, but this is, these answers are my best knowledge on, on everything. And uh, as of now, and things can change. So please, uh, please bear with me and, uh, and uh, please understand that again, things can change. Okay, with that, let's see, let's see what we've got uh, from the community. And if you can, uh, you can actually uh, come to Twitch uh, and ask your question there as well. Then I will try to answer it uh, uh, live as well. Uh, there is a lot of questions. Uh, about it let let me go through that and uh, what i promise i will get back to all of you get back to, uh, to you regarding this with uh, with uh, with actual dates but for that i do need to create and do need to do a, a generic uh, ama and not a grd specific ama but Regardless, I will do I will do my best to answer questions. Battle Royale and Punk Battle Royale. We have uh, engaged uh, an extra team who is working on specifically on Battle Royale, and we do have a release date, and that release date is not far away. But again, I'm not going to utter the date before I double confirm it with Levante and with Cubic Fox. Cubic Fox is the company who is working with us to make the Battle Royale and the Punk Battle Royale a reality. It is going very well, and uh, we do have a release date. But again, let me talk about that actual date uh, when I have uh, certainty. Ether car traits. Ether car traits are being worked on, and the most important part of the Ethercard trace, Ethercard trace is, is to get the, the framework out that will make it extremely simple to create and implement the traits. The good thing, thing is that I've got now three people solely dedicated on rolling that framework out and the actual framework will actually be live by the time GRD Girls Robots Dragons is going to be live, which is uh, which is like two weeks from now, I think. And that means that from that point on, we will have a very simple way to implement all the ether car traits. What we will do, we will have a dedicated person implementing those, but I'm also planning to put 
big bounties on implementing those traits as well. So the framework will be open source, documentation will be available, and there will be significant prices, bounties on implementing those, uh, those utility traits and new ones as well. So it will be done by, the, uh, by us and it will be done ideally and potentially by the community to implement those traits and then the bounties will be paid out. I think this is the fastest and best ways, best way to, uh, to, to implement this. And um, there is a very significant piece of information that I cannot talk about it. Uh, hopefully next week or so I will be able to, very, which will make you understand why these bounties and why this particular way is the best way to go ahead. Next question is from uh, Malbo. Uh, is, uh, he says, I've had the pleasure of working with the Glasses self-service platform uh, lately, and it's amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, the, the credits go to, to Levente and his team who has been working relentlessly on that platform. Uh, it is so easy to set up a collection with traits and utilities. Yes, thank you. This is what we, ha I, we have been trying to do uh, for a long time, but we simply had to have a sizable set of samples of how actual businesses need to use traits to make it really useful for them. And now we can actually take those samples and put them, and we have put them into that framework. Uh, are there any insights on the pricing of the platform? Yes, there are. And uh, again, I need to remind you again that uh, what I'm saying is my current best understanding and opinion. But we've got now a company of 50 people and uh, I am not the one who is making the course. With all that said, the way I want to run it is that you will, if somebody goes to the platform and creates their own collection and issues it with the automated tools without engaging uh, the Galaxy's developers, then the price will start with uh, in the single digit percentage of the, of the sale. So let's say if you make uh, uh, 100 ether then we will we will then the platform will take a single digit ether uh, as the, for the price of using the platform for issuing uh, the 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 collections but the goal is to to build up and generate and create an ecosystem where dust is useful as long as we can make dust really useful, not only for the creators, but for the community members as well, the single digit percentage on the, on the drops will go down. And it is not out of the question that it will technically go to zero. Again, don't quote me on this when we start, but the mid long term goal is to make minting technically free, except gas costs, gas costs because we, because that needs to be paid to the, uh, uh, to the network. But we don't want to make money on the minting. We want to make money by making dust useful. From Merli. I really love the girls' dragons robots project. So my burning question for Andras: What is going to be your favorite girls' dragons or robots? Uh, I uh, when it, when it would come, for example, for a uh, for a nice dinner with uh, with one of these, obviously I would choose girls, but. I've been happily married for 25 years, so certain avenues of actions are not available for me. So 
because of that, I will, at this point, I will have to go uh, with, uh, with dragons. And uh, when it comes to the detail of the artwork, uh, I, I do think that, uh, and it's, that's without joking, the detail uh, that went into them and, uh, and the realism is absolutely stunning. So from these particular sets of images, my choice would be dragons. Okay, uh, when does the team plan to refill the dust pools? The next question from Mousetrap. It has been uh, um, a next to immediate task for the uh, for the for the last couple of weeks or months, and it looks like it is it is uh, coming to fruition. Uh, I actually talked with Vlad last week about it, and he said he takes it as his responsibility to uh, to finally release all these NFTs that we've got from the different drops into the dust pools. Vlad and his team is working on an incredible project which finally if everything goes well we'll see the the light about next week and i think i think that will also mark the point where uh, where vlad will have the time to uh, to to get the dust pools refilled and basically what we need to do there is not vlad refilling the dust pools, but finally take the two days that is necessary to create a system where any of our other 20 uh, technical people or 25 or 30 technical people can run the scripts, press the buttons and refill dust pools without the need of Vlad and Mickey. So what needs to be done and what is being done is to make those actions easily available and then when that is done then as soon as the release is done you will see the dust pools popping up like on the day or or very quickly after the release so a new dust pools from now on should come online quickly the way we start, we, we re reorganized our work this January, enabled us to, to start delivering. We delivered on the dust uh, trickling, we delivered on the, on, the, on the Phoenix, we are delivering on the rest uh, as well, but we are taking it way beyond the original promises. Uh, next question. Currently, a user trades dust for NFTs in the NFT pools. Would Galaxies ever be open to allowing users to trade these blue chip NFTs back into the pools in exchange uh, for dust? This is a good question. This is a very interesting proposition. Uh, I haven't thought about that, it, uh, that yet, but I promise we will give it a thought and, and, and see in what ways it would, it would make sense. So, uh, so yes, we will consider this and uh, we will get back to you. Will EtherCard users or normal users be able to create their own NFT pools within Galaxies? Technically, yes, because once you create your own collection, you will have the chance and the choice, not the chance, sorry, the choice that once you release your collections and you did your sale and you completed your sale to, to mint the rest of the unsold NF, un, your unsold NFTs into, into a dust pool. So yes, you will have this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this ability. And what is interesting that creates a completely different dynamics because it is okay if you start building your 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 community because again this is not an nft issuance platform galaxies is a community engagement 
and, and growth platform that enables anybody or any entity with a community to monetize their own creativity. So from, if, you, if you approach it from this angle, it's absolutely okay to create a set of NFTs that doesn't sell out because you are building your community. And as long as you've got the right community, you are using properly the, uh, the, the, the community space provided by the platform and you are using properly the utility trace provided by the platform, you will grow your community. And those, and people who come, they can go to the dust pool and pick up the NFTs from, uh, from your community to be part of your community. I think on the long term, this is a much more possible way of how people will engage with NFTs than the, the current, oh, let's do a sale and then it is success if it's sold out and it is not a success if it's not sold out. This is not, uh, this is not how communities are being created. This is how one-time fire sales are being, uh, being created. So I think on the long term, it will be much more like that the, if you have a community, you provide your existing community value by creating an NFT with the right utility traits, with the right engagement, with the right gamification. And then your community grows. So when your community grows, new members can come and pick up the NFTs from your dust pool or from, you, from the open market. So yes, absolutely. Uh, just for clarification, once more, since 5% over 8 years adds up, can a pristine card that is, is a good standing be transferred to the to that user's ledger code wallet and keep pristine status? Or will any transfer at all simply lose pristine status? This is a much more difficult problem than it stands. It goes back to the fact that, uh, that blockchains... Uh, public blockchains, uh, trustless blockchains like Ethereum are CPU resistance, resistant. It means that uh, it is impossible to tell or to prevent to somebody to create a new account. So it, that also means that is pretty much impossible to, to tell whether you are moving your NFT from one of your account, from one of your accounts to to your other account, like moving to a code wallet, or uh, or uh, you are just giving it or selling it to somebody. That's why the only surefire way to to handle pristine, if you say if you say sorry, no transfers, that is what pristine means. It hasn't been transferred. Implementing something that enables, under certain circumstances, that one can make a transfer without losing the pristine status, is potentially possible, but uh, is uh, is much more. It's, it's significantly more complex. I've got some ideas uh, around it, and, but, but when we implement this, we are not going to, we, 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 we basically say, here's something, here is a utility trait, here is a badge, here is something that enables you to move this card once without losing pristine status. And we don't care that you sold it or moved it your moved it, it your 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 um, uh, uh, code wallet or whatever. Basically, there is no way to tell, so we won't we won't be able to, won't want to tell. What we will do is, what we could do is is to create something that says, under certain circumstances, like in once in a blue moon, you will get this, which will enable you to transfer this card and not lose the pristine, uh, pristine uh, status. I promise 
I will think about it and I will put it up to the community uh, to uh, uh, to to see whether it's a it's a good solution. But uh, there are some other things that we need to, we need to do before before I get here get there. Andras, how do you how do you keep in shape? You always look fit. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, recently, I had a business travel, and uh, and in the hotel room, in the there was a there was a there was a scale, and I made the grave mistake of stepping on it. Let me tell you, I am not as fit uh, as I'd like to. There is about uh, about uh, five kilogram or what is that ten pounds extra on me that is that is that is that should not be there and I'm working on removing that. Uh, so, but but thank you. <laughs> also, what is your favorite food? If it's pizza, I've lost the bet. Don't say pizza, please. <laughs> well, Italian food is I think it's technically fa the favorite of everybody, uh, uh, every human being. But uh, uh, seriously, if I would have to uh, stick to one cuisine that uh, I would be forced to eat for the rest of my life, then I would either choose uh, good North Indian vegetarian food, the good one with the good uh, uh, curries, which is, as we know, is may or may not actually be Indian, and uh, it's it's influenced by a lot of different uh, uh, cultures. But I love it if it's not too spicy, uh, or Japanese. Japanese uh, Japanese food, which is obviously absolutely not spicy. Uh, very simple and have a lot of uh, lot of lot of variety. These are these basically these these two are my favorites. So either North Indian or very good Japanese from good Japanese food from Japan. Uh, I think I could spend my life eating any of these. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, Will there still be a chicken treat? I think is the last question <clears throat> that I have on my list here. Uh, potentially, I, I promise that I will put on a significant uh, bounty once the framework uh, was open sourced for anybody to implement the chicken treat, and then there will be a chicken treat. So that's about it. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for the opportunity to to come back and, uh, and 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 talk to you again. And I hope to make this a regular event again. Uh, and uh, I think there is a couple of things that I'm 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 uh, I have to come back to you with, including the details of the GRD drop, uh, including the gamifications uh, and the and the actual prices uh, of the of the of the price pool and like the prices of the NFTs and uh, and uh, how many of them I think these are very important details that is again scheduled to be finalized a week from next Monday so in about uh, 10 days and I will get back to you again with the timing on the dust pools and everything else that uh, this was uh, highlighted here. I will ask the amazing Seth and Mariana to make sure that they uh, that they make me not to forget to cover this in the next AMA. Again, thank you very much. Uh, I hope to see you soon and uh, I hope to see you on the uh, on the when we release the GRD collection as well. Thank you. Talk to you soon.